Hey everyone, it's Tim Clapham here from Hello Lux with another tutorial. Now I know a lot of you use nodes, especially when it comes to working with materials for Redshift and Octane, but how many people actually use the Cinema 4D scene nodes? In this tutorial, I want to show you a few ways that you could possibly use these in your workflow. I'm going to start by coming up and opening the asset browser and you can see that we've got a whole category for nodes and if we fold this down we've got a whole bunch of subfolders in here. Now for instance if we come to the geometry primitive in here we've got lots of primitives and they're all created using nodes. So if we take the cube for example and just drag that into our object manager you can see when I select it it says C nodes generator whereas when we select our regular cube it says cube object. If we disable the classic cube, so we can only see the scene nodes cube, there it is. Okay, let's delete that, we don't need that anymore. Um, let's come over to our geometry generators this time and have a look what we've got in here. So here, for example, we've got a mesh primitive. So this is very similar, it's a nodes generator, but this time under the object tab, primitive type, we've got all of these different primitive objects and we can change which object is being generated in this pop-up list. So it's basically all of the primitives in one object. We have a very similar for splines and you can see we've got a spline primitive and once again, a whole bunch of presets. And there are a few new ones in there. So it's definitely worth exploring these objects to find um, the new objects that you have in cinema. So if we press C to make that editable, you can see that we still get a regular spline at the end of it. Okay, so let's select our cube. I'm just going to um, frame that so we can work with it. So as well as generating objects, we can also modify and manipulate. And if we come to the geometry modifier, you can see we've got all of these different capsules and these will perform procedural modeling operations on your objects. We also have some selection capsules. And of course, we're familiar with a lot of these to create selections on our objects. So what we're going to do is we're going to use some of these and build a little setup. So if we drag that noise selection onto our cube, OK, and you can see that we can choose the type of selection. I'm going to leave it on polygons and we can adjust the threshold and the type of noise, etc. OK, let's come over to our geometry modifier and let's select extrude. OK, and now you can see that it's taken that selection and it's extruded those faces. It's using the default selection, which is being generated by the selection object above. If we change the seed, you can see that it's now changed the number of polygons selected. In fact, it's actually selected all of them in this example, but that's fine. Let's select the extrude. I'm going to create a larger offset. Let's set that to 500. OK, and let's add some variation to that and also increase the number of subdivisions. So I'm going to set the variation to be 75 and let's set the subdivisions to be 2. Let's come back over to the geometry selections and this time we're going to use random selection. If we drop that under the extrude, we're essentially creating a procedural modeling workflow. So with this random selection, let's come to our geometry modifiers and this time choose subdivide. As soon as we drop that in, you're going to see it does subdivide. And if we come back to our random selection, we have this chance slider and as we pull it down at zero it's everything and at 100 it's everything but in between it um, varies the amount based on the value of course we can change the seed um, and that's pretty much it with that random selection it's different to the noise selection let's copy that and create another one and this time let's just change the seed okay and i'm going to use a delete capsule now just to delete a few random polygons so it's not particularly exciting what we've created um, but hopefully you can see some of the potential because it's procedural we can go back and change any of these capsules um, further up the stack i'm going to take all of them and duplicate them okay so now we're essentially running the same operation now three times four times okay and you can see we create this sort of weird abstract shape now, obviously, stacking up all of those capsules like that isn't exactly the ideal workflow. But the cool thing is it's procedural. So we can come back to one of these earlier selections, change the random seed, and it's just going to give us a totally different result. But yeah, it's a bit silly to do it this way. So let's select all of these and let's just delete them. Instead of doing it this way, let's create our own capsule. And within that capsule, we can set up a node network using those very same commands or operations. So under nodes, asset construction, in here we have um, a geometry modifier group and we also have selection modifier groups and we can use those to create our own capsules. So let's take that geometry modifier group and drag it onto our cube. When we do that, you can see that the node editor changes um, and updates to show the capsule contents. 
And this is where we build our setup. So the geometry comes in here, goes through some commands, and then comes out here. And whatever we put in this middle bit will be the operations that we wish to perform. So let's create the same setup. Press C in the node editor and type in noise select cell. You only have to type a few letters of each word and there's our noise selection. We take our geometry in and we wire that into the geometry out. Next, we can press C again and type in extrude or the first few letters. And then we can just drag this onto the actual wire and then that would automatically connect. Let's use similar settings that we had before. Um, so let's come down and set our offset to 500 with a variation of 75 and I'm going to choose three subdivisions this time. Okay, if we come back to our noise selection, once again, we could change the random seed so that we have a different selection group. Let's now add a random selection. I'm just going to use exactly the same setup that we had before, but with nodes rather than capsules. Now we can add in a subdivide. Okay, drop that on. Let's add in another selection. So I've just typed select so we can see all the different options, but I'm actually going to use noise selection again. Okay. And then finally, we had a delete. So let's drag and drop that on there. Okay. And there we go. And you can see we've achieved the same result using nodes. Um, and this is all contained within this capsule, which we can then copy or duplicate. Um, and there we go. Now we've got four repetitions of the same thing. Um, and, but each one of them has got the same set of nodes. So once again, although this is a little bit neater, still not really the ideal method. The ideal method would be to actually create a loop. And we can do that within nodes as well. So if we just take all of these nodes, and I'm going to cut those. Next, I'm going to press C and type loop. And what we want is this loop carried value. So we're going to drop that down. We get this big node. OK. Now, the first thing we really need to do is just set the type. At the moment, it's set to a vector, and you can see that. And we need to set this to be a geometry object. It's going to be looping over geometry. So we change that to geometry object. Um, and we can call the variable geo just because we then know it means our geometry. And if we grab the port and link that to our geo in and then our geometry out. So what we need to then do is go into our loop carried value by clicking on that folder. And then in here, we paste our nodes that we previously cut. We take our geo and we link that to the geometry in. And then at the end, the geometry out goes out. And there we go. You look at that. We've created the exact same thing once again. But this time, it's in a loop. But it's not looping, obviously. It's only performing that operation once. So to set the loop, we can set what's called a range. So we add a range in there. So the range will cause the nodes to iterate that number of times. So we're going to set the range to the inner scope. And if we select that range, you can see it's at zero. But as I increment the value, you can see we're incrementing the number of times that it's looping over that geometry and performing those operations. Let's just set that to two for now. Now, one of the things is that if we select our capsule, we don't have any attributes in the attribute manager, but we can actually promote attributes up. So if we drag them into this left side and promote the port or add new input, um, this end value, we can call this one range end, so it's a little bit clearer. Okay, now you can see if we select our multi extrude, we have this input range end and we can now control the number of loops directly in the object manager. We can even do that from within this loop node. So for instance, we can add an input for our extrude offset drag that, add new input, we go up one level, then we need to take that and then drag it again and create another new input. And we can call this one extrude offset. And once again, that will appear in the attribute manager. So now we can control the size of our extrude. And obviously you can propagate whatever ports you want. This allows you to create these as kind of pre-built assets um, without the user needing to actually go into the nodes because you can set all of the parameters on the attribute manager. So now we've built that as a capsule. How about we build that directly in scene nodes? Rather than recreate everything, I'm just going to copy those two nodes and now switch off my cube multi-extrude and then come down and choose scene nodes in the node editor. So we can build this purely with scene nodes. I'll just paste those in. I'm going to type cube. 
which is going to give me this cube node. Well, actually, I want to toggle the node type here so it becomes a mesh primitive. And we have our geometry, and we can drag that into the geo input there. We take our geo and drag that to the children. Okay, so that doesn't work because we need one more node in between. We just need to make sure that it knows that it is a geometry object. So we use the geometry operator, and this allows us to connect our geo. Okay, and also the op output. And the op output contains a lot of data. I'm not going to go into that now. But by doing that, you can see that, boom, we have created our setup. We can come to the range here and increment the number of loops. So you can see it's pretty much exactly the same as doing it with the capsules. I can delete everything in the object manager and it all works. The difference is that this is using a cube generated within nodes. So it's going to be faster because we're not using any of classic cinema. All right, just undo that because I didn't actually want to delete those and I'm going to delete those nodes out of there so we can come back to the setup. I've actually got this with a few pre-made in here um, and I just wanted to show you, you can actually use this kind of setup with your um, current renderer, etc. It creates the geometry. These are perfectly viable objects to have within your scene. I'll just switch those few things on, bring over my Redshift render view and let's just have a look at what we've got. Now that's going to take a few seconds, um, but the reason I showed you this example is because these kind of loops over geometry just aren't possible in classic cinema. Um, you can't do that kind of thing without nodes. And there we go. You can see it's working fine with Redshift and our volumetric lights. I want to show you another example. So I'm going to open a new scene. Let's just delete that now. Let's come over to our asset browser. And last time we created a kind of geometry modifier. This time we're going to create a simple generator. So if we come down and add this object group to our object manager you can see that once again it kind of works similar to a capsule okay and I'm going to create something really simple here but it's really really handy as well so we're going to add an object as a child which is the sphere in the node editor I'm going to press C and type edge line and this is going to add a pre-made node asset which um, is creates splines from your object edges so if we try and link the geometry to the output we can't we're going to need to use the geometry operator as we did before and then we can link our geometry in there and we can then take that to the output. As far as the geometry in, we can add a new input. OK, this first input will look at the first child, but we need to add a nested port. And we come down to object bundle here and we find geometry. And if we fold that down, that's now going to take the first object. So I'll rename this object and it's going to output the geometry. But before it can do that, we need to right click and choose edit port that brings up the resource editor and you can see here we've got this scene port mode it's currently set to none and we just need to set that to object for the node system to recognize that it's looking at the first child and it's an object and then we can output that geometry and link it into there and as soon as I do that we get the result that we want and you can see that we've now taken that sphere and created a bunch of curves if we add in a torus you can see that now we have all of those splines generated from the edges on our torus. Now we could make this editable and you can see that it does indeed generate regular splines. But of course you want to keep that procedural. So I'm just going to undo and we've got a procedural edge to spline generator. So as you can see, there is a lot of power there. Um, the workflow is a little bit convoluted right now and hopefully that will improve. But I just want to take this moment to say thank you to Noseman. Um, thanks to Nasus for helping me out. And for everyone that's watching, I hope that this has given you some ideas of the possibilities of working with capsules in your regular scenes, scene nodes, and creating your own assets using the asset generation.